All right, what's going on, everybody? This is your boy Finesse, and I'm here at the uh, Savannah Motorsports, the Indian dealership in my area. And what I have right here is the Indian Scout Rogue, and we also have the Indian Scout Bobber 20. We're gonna be looking at these two bikes, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on uh, each one of them. All right, y'all. So to start out, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with the Indian Scout Rogue. Uh, so there's two versions of this bike. You have the Scout Rogue, which is this one, and then you have the Scout 60. So just a, a few things to note. So the engines on these are blacked out, unlike uh, the Scout Bobbers and the Scouts. Um, on the Scouts and the Scout Bobbers, the engine has this uh, chrome top. So that way you know that this is the, the larger version of the two. So you'll have a uh, 80 something horsepower and then you'll have 100 horsepower. So for the Scout, for the Scout, they switched it up a little bit. Uh, here on the tank, it has the Indian logo, but right under that it says Scout. So that's how you know that this version is the 100 horsepower version. And the same thing goes for the Scout Bobber 20. Uh, the, the engine is the same. It's just there's a few obvious differences between the two. So. Uh, we're just going to start here from the front. So you're going to get this uh, front fairing that's attached to the forks. So it moves when the, uh, when the wheel moves, just like on the Chieftain. Uh, you get a halogen headlight. There is also an option for the LED headlight that you can put on here, but it comes standard with this, uh, this halogen headlight. Uh, you still get the chopped fender. However, you get a larger 19-inch front wheel on it with a single disc brake. Uh, the turn signals, all these are LEDs, uh, front and rear. Uh, it is water-cooled, so you have your radiator right here. Uh, up here, you, it comes with the uh, Mini Apes, and you got the bar-in mirrors, just like on the, other, on the uh, other Scout, they have the bar-in mirrors. They also, I mean, they still have the perch up here, just in case you don't like the bar-in mirrors, you can, you can put them up here still. So that's, that's, a, that's a cool option. Uh, as far as the gauges go, you both get analog gauges in them. Um, the, what is it, the seat height is 25.6 inches for both. Um, so not much difference there. Really and truly, the only differences that you're going to have is this fairing and this front wheel. And, and the, the blacked out appearance of it. So... Um, I would imagine that that's going to change the ride up uh, quite a bit, so you're going to be able to turn in a bit easier. Uh, but as the bike sits, the bike is, is low and long. And depending on, depending on the angle that you're getting, man, like this is a, this is a sexy bike. So uh, I'd, be, I'd be really interested. So crazy enough, I have yet to test drive a Scout for whatever reason. <laughs> Well, I think I've I think I've test drove every other Indian product that the, that they have out on the market, but uh, this is this will be my first time with the Scouts, so I know I got off on a tangent there. So this bike competes with bikes like the uh, Harley Davidson Sportster, um, and eh, I mean I, you could probably throw in like some Triumphs or uh, some of those other smaller uh, city style bikes. Um, but as far as the V-Twins go, I mean, you're looking at, I mean, the main competitor is going to be Harley, right? So uh, the, the Sportster and this. So now I know the new Sportster has added some uh, electronics to the bike, but Indian keeps this bike uh, pretty retro, if you will. So it's, it's, it's mostly analog. All right, so 
looking at the Scout Bobber 20. Like I said, this is the uh, the high the, the larger engine of the two. Um, this is a used bike, so this is probably not in its stock configuration because I don't believe it comes with floorboards. I believe it comes with the pegs, uh, the, the forward pegs, just like on the Scout Rogue here. Um, it still has the halogen headlight, still has LED lights. Uh, the 20 does come with the Mini Apes. There's digital gauge clusters. I mean, everything else is pretty much the same. This one does have aftermarket uh, exhaust. So same ride height, same uh, dimensions as far as the tank goes. Um, I do, so uh, I was never really a big fan of the spoked wheels uh, on a bike. However, when uh, Miss Finesse got her Super Chief, it has the spoked wheels on it. And if you get it at the right angle, man, those things look amazing when they're going down the road. So this one has the, uh, the spoked wheel in the front. And instead of having the 19-inch uh, tire, you've got a 16-inch, like, like a fat wide tire. You know what I'm saying? Look at that thing. The tire's nice and, nice and wide as compared to what you have on the Scout. Um, and then it's almost got like an off-road tread to it. Um, so that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, it kind of gives you, it goes back to that old school feel, uh, you know, like your World War II or World War I uh, bikes where they had to be like duro or a dual purpose street and off road. I mean, I don't think we're going to be taking this, uh, I don't think anybody's going to be taking this off road, but you know, it's there. All right, let's start out with the Scout Bobber 20. Like I said, <clears throat> you've got this uh, 16 inch wheel. With the uh, it's got more it's got more meat on it. I mean, I'm, 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 I would imagine that that's going to help out with the the feel, the ride feel, the suspension, um, and I would imagine that's going to affect some of the turning performance. I mean, this bike is small, so I mean, you're not going to be uh, it, you know affecting performance that much. But it has a, a real cool look to it. I like that look. Uh, like I said, you got the Indian floorboards here, which I think standard are the pegs. And just like I was saying with the engine, the way you can tell the difference between the two engine uh, specs is this chrome top on it when you're looking at the Scouts and the uh, Scout Bobbers. All right. And then, like I said, this one has the aftermarket exhaust. Um, these, this, the suspension travel on that, I mean, look at that, man. That's, that's like tiny. Uh, but it is adjustable. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know that you're going to be I mean, I've seen people do it, go two up and like take long distance trips, but man, <laughs> that's got to be a thing. But, um, but like I was saying, when you get it, get it at a certain angle, I mean, look at that, man. Look at that. That is just, that's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. I tell you, one thing, the one thing that Indian does really well are the lines on their bikes. Um, and... Not to, not to, not to bash Harley or anything like that, but when I when I see Harleys, to me, they they're they're too retro. They're too retro, you know. And I think this, I think this is a good mix of retro and modern styling. Uh, more so when you get into some of the upper models that have all the the digital doodads and things, but. Just as it sits, I mean this. I mean, I mean, you can get this from just about any angle, man. That is that is just a beautiful bike. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> so uh, it, it it does have the uh, belt drive. I think the only Indian bike that has a chain drive is the FTR, if I'm not mistaken. But they're all belt drive. Those are quiet, um, and supposedly they're easier to maintain. But you know, hey, I'm no maintainer. Uh, <laughs> So here you have your keys, uh, so it comes with the two keys. Now, me, me in particular, I, I, I mean, this is, this is part of that retro, but I don't, I don't like that, um, you know, going down there to reach your key. But, I mean, that's, that's just me nitpicking, so not a big deal. And then, uh, like I said, this uh, gauge. This gauge cluster here. And then as far as the bar end mirrors go, I have zero experience with bar end mirrors. Um, but I mean, if if they if the engine runs as smooth as the engine on my challenger, it's not gonna be a problem seeing anything in those mirrors. Alright. 
All right, so we didn't spend enough time over here. Let's let's check out this rogue. All right. Look at that, man. That is just beautiful. You know I'm a sucker for all black. That's why I got my Challenger and, and the, the matte finish all black. So, again, you've got 19-inch uh, front wheel. And these rims, these rims really make this bike handsome. Like, this is a... These wheels, these wheels are really, really nice, man. They set it off. I think the balance between the matte and the polish is 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 amazing. Uh, you know, because you've got your matte wheels on the gloss rims, then you got the matte engine on the gloss body parts. It all just works. It all just works. So again, like I said, you can tell on these here, it will say Scout underneath. If it's the, the other version of the engine, it'll just say Indian without the Scout. And like I said, so you got your blacked out heads on the engine. You got your pegs. You got the, the uh, standard Scout exhaust. And even this one, even this one, man. Like I said, there's, just, there's no bad angles on this bike. So, and also, the, you get a, a different style seat. Now, when I was moving these around earlier just to get them in position, um, I was really surprised at how pliable, <laughs> how pliable that seat is. That seat is, that seat is comfortable just from, you know, I mean, obviously that's not me riding it, but just moving it here and there, that, that, that seat is really, really comfortable. Uh, and also the suspension, the suspension, you know, it, when I sat on it, it compressed and I, and that also took me by surprise. I thought it was going to be stiff, but it, it mushed right in. You got, you have little touches like this with the Indian logo. And then you got Indian here, you got Indian on the tank. Um, you know, just those, just those little, those little touches here and there. And they do those on, on other bikes as well. So there's also a cover here. And I know on the, in, in, in speaking to friends and all, so some of the, some of the other bikes out there, Harley, <laughs> they have, you know, you got to buy like covers and things for some of these areas. And I just, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you need it really. I mean, especially with this type of, this style of bike. For this style of bike, you're trying to go for a, a retro, you know, analog look. And uh, I think this I think this bike captures that very very well. Both of these bikes do. So I think what I'm gonna do is well. So this is a this is a 22 Scout. So I am not gonna test drive this. Uh, I did not I did not ask to test drive this. Um, just because of the fact it's it's a 22, you know, and and. On top of that, the, they're essentially the same bike. However, the front wheel, I mean, really the front wheel. You know, that's the only th difference that you're gonna get. So I'm gonna take uh, the, this uh, 20, the Scout Bobber 20 out for a quick little test drive, give you guys my impressions on it, uh, let you know what I think. Um, so this will be, be my first time riding the Scout, so you'll get my very first impressions. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start both of these up. I'll give you a start. That way you can uh, uh, at least hear them, right? So these are these are Vance and Hines, and those are the stock uh, Indian exhaust.
All right, so obviously <laughs> the Vance and Hines has a much deeper throw to your sound. I mean, you're essentially coming straight off the engine. So it's, it's way more aggressive. Um, if you're looking at adding some sound, I mean, I, I tell you right now, that's a, that's a great option. I'm not sure about the price or how much they are or anything like that. That you can, you know, you can do some little research on your own, but those are, those would be a nice addition. If I had this bike, I would probably do something similar to that. But anyway, so that's enough, uh, that's enough looking around and talking. Let's get this bad boy out on the road. All right, y'all. So we are sitting on the Scout Bobber 20 and we're about to go for a quick little test ride. So I am 5'9", and I should have got a shot of this <laughs> when I had the tripod out. But I am 5'9", and I am sitting down. I've got a 32-inch inseam, and I'm sitting down very comfortable, flat foot, bend in my knee, or bend in my leg. Uh, reaching out to the controls. Um, man, this is a, a very comfortable seating position for somebody at 5'9". So let's turn the key. Hit this bad boy, kickstand is up, clutch is in. We're in neutral because I can see it on the dash. <laughs> Give it a start. That thing sounds good when it's running, man. All right. Start off in second gear. See how that goes. Oh yeah. So we're just gonna take a quick little run here right down the street. So I'm noticing everything is very compact. So coming from a Challenger to this, obviously, you know, there's gonna be a, a level of compactness to it. So for me, trying to fit my uh, fit my shoe under the control is a bit is a bit weird because the uh, the lever is so close to the pedal. I'm having to shove my foot in there. Tell you what, you get all of the wind. All right, so I wasn't sure if my voice was getting picked up, so I didn't want to say too much while I was coming down the road there. But 
<laughs> As you could see, you were catching all of the wind. And I don't know if the camera was catching it, but it was lifting my helmet up. All this wind coming in. Now that could be attributed to it's a kind of a kind of a windy day, and I was driving into the wind. So conditions aren't going to always be perfect. But if I had a bike like this, I would definitely invest in either a windshield or I would always wear a full face helmet. So I will say it is not lacking in power. I don't feel cramped up. I'm actually, I actually have a lot of room. Uh, my, my butt cheeks are touching the top of the suspension though. So that feels a little bit weird. But the ride, the ride is pretty smooth. I'm surprised. And yeah, you can you can turn this bike for sure. <laughs> I don't know if the fairing on the Rogue does a, does a good job or not blocking the wind, but you definitely need something for this bike, especially like if you're near one of those states where it's like a lot of flat ground, like Texas, Kansas, you know, like the Midwest. If you're in those areas, you're, you are gonna need a windshield. <laughs> I tell you what, man. So I was trying to do a U-turn right there and it did get down on the little uh, the little protector for the pegs. So they got the little sticks that stick out to let you know when you're going too low. And what I found on the, these uh, floorboards, uh, I don't know if these are the floorboards that, that are for this bike. Let me, let me park it. Like look how, look how far down that is and me just trying to do a U-turn right there uh, to, you know, to, to bring the bike in to park it. I did uh, touch the ground with it and it wasn't even like a, it wasn't even like a, a huge lean. It was just like a regular, you know, lean. But the bike, man, that engine, that engine, no problem with power. That is, you, if you're looking for something fun, uh, something quick to get on, you are not going to have any regrets about getting this engine. If, uh, if you're looking for something like a beginner bike or uh, maybe you're just a, a vertically challenged individual, 
<laughs> right? Um, then this bike is going to serve you well. Uh, it's not, it's not going to let you down. Uh, if I had my, my choice of uh, bikes, I would probably go with the Rogue for the simple fact that it comes with the windshield. Now, there are aftermarket windshields for the Scouts. So there's uh, the fairing that kind of looks like the Chieftain. So it actually looks kind of cool. I like them. Um, and that may do, that may do some uh, help with uh, reducing the wind on you. But, man, you, it's, it's been a while since I rode a bike without a, without a front fairing or without a windshield. And you, you're feeling all of that, man. <laughs> so that portion I didn't like. Uh, as far as, like, um, the things that I do like, I like the look. I like the style. Um, I like the engine, the ride. So, so look, I was actually thinking that that ride was going to be rough and I was going to be feeling every bump, and, and that is not the case, man. It's, it's damped pretty good. I mean, I'm at, uh, I'm like two, 220 maybe. And it did not feel like it was jarring my back loose or anything like that. It actually felt quite comfortable. I could see myself, uh, going for, uh, going for a, a, a good, good ride on there. You know, I don't know how, how much fuel the, uh, I don't know how much what the fuel economy is, how far it's going to get you. But as it sits right now, man, like I could see myself maybe, maybe an hour. You know, going around, bombing around town, doing some things like that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it would not replace the Challenger by no means. I would take this as like a second or third bike. Or if I've never ridden a bike before and I'm trying to get into bikes, this would definitely be a good place to start. Um, because, I mean, it's it's easy. Man, it's it's... It's it's just a it's a it's really surprising to me. I just thought the bike was going to be rough. I really did, especially after being used to my Challenger. But man, it was it was a smooth ride. I was really surprised, really really surprised. And so the aftermarket they do have piggyback suspension for these, which gives you a longer travel, and supposedly they feel even better. So man, I, I you know that the the wind if I had the fairing. That, w that would probably get me on one of these. Um, but anyway, um, I just want to send a big shout out to Bob, Zach, and Aaron. They're the ones that helped me out getting this, uh, this little review here set up. Um, I really appreciate the support, man. You guys letting me come in and, and review some of these bikes. Uh, really good people, man. You should come down here, check them out if you're interested in the Indian motorcycle and you're in the Savannah area. Um, not only that, they've got like some other bikes. They got like some Royal Enfields in there. So if that's the kind of thing that you're looking for, they got some of that. They got used bikes. They got Harleys. They got all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, side by sides, all, all manner of entertainment. <laughs> all right, y'all. What's going on? It's your boy Finesse, and I'm here with Daryl. Daryl, but uh, Daryl, man, where you where you uh, where you from? I'm from New Jersey. You from New Jersey? All right. How long you been riding a bike? Uh, riding motorcycles 40 it be 40 years Christmas nice nice and you said you have a challenger right yes, sir. Really go on look at it yeah, man I what the what uh, what year is it uh, 22 22 oh okay yes indeed look at that you got your backrest on there you got your bars yeah, it's a base model. right 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 hey it's still a challenger hey we got the we got the same engine yeah you uh you have any other plans for it uh, yes, I plan to put a, maybe buy the torque trunk for when I ride my wife. Right. Uh, you know, highway pegs, um, you know, driver's backrest. Stereo, I'm fine with. I love those speakers. Yeah. But maybe the windshield. Yeah, definitely the windshield. Yeah. But not so, too much, much, much more. Oh, okay. So I was looking at the other windshield too, but I like, I like this shape. I just want mine tinted. <laughs> but they don't make a tinted version of this. Yeah. They got the it's got the flares on it. Yeah. Do, so. do they all have the uh, cut out here? Yep. For some wind? Yep. Oh, okay. So how do you feel about the lowers? Man, it's damn bad. It's all good. <laughs> so Daryl was asking me yeah. about how I felt about the lowers. So mm -hmm. I think during cold during cold weather mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Are they worth the eleven, twelve hundred dollars? Uh 
that, that I don't know. <laughs> that's a that's a decision you, you got to make on your own. But I have heard stories from people that own the pursuits that have the lowers that they're having issues with it heating up their legs, like like bad. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, don't now they, vents, don't they, have they do have the vents, but you got your fan. There's a fan that blows out the heat right there, so it vents out when the radiator's going. Yeah, now, cool. now I don't know. Me personally, I have not experienced this. I don't know. I'm just going off what they're telling me. But um, if you guys, uh, if you guys experience that, just put it down in the comments. Uh, help him out. He's probably you know make a decision or whatever once he wants to do. But um, from what I've heard, that there's some issues with the heat. But when it's in cold weather, that's what you want. You want some heat. <laughs> so yeah, man, that that uh, that'd be all right. But man, this is a, this is, I like this. I like this color though, because it's kind of like a matte, but it's not. It's like a shine to it. Yeah. That's just, it's a beautiful bike. Yeah, you gotta get used to the names they come out with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> titanium. Titanium smoke. smoke. Right, right, right. <laughs> when I saw it on paper, I'm like, what is that? You know, I couldn't figure it out. Man. Yeah. And it looks different from inside. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah and that sunlight hits it. Outside to me. Yeah. Like, is that the same bike? <laughs> you still got the stock exhaust on there? Yeah. yeah. Changing that out. I don't know. You don't know? I did some. I, hey, I did some videos, man. There's videos on the exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you got the, I'm, I'm pleased with the motor. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a uh, an overhead cams type of guy. You mm. know, I don't like the push rod engines. Right, right. And that's one of the things I was looking for. I think it's smooth, you know, isn't it? I like that the power delivery yeah, of yeah. the overhead cam. I think it's you know. Memphis is a, a sport bike, you know? Right, right. That thing's smooth, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, right, man. It, it is hard to get away from that smooth. <laughs> it is hard to get away from yeah, that smooth because yeah, when you, yeah. you drive from state to state... I feel just... like I'm on a muscle bike. <laughs> on a muscle bike. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Man, you all right with me. <laughs> hey, so, uh, man, hey, man, this is a really nice bike. Really Thank cool you. dude. Thank you. Uh, it was nice meeting you. All right. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah, Pleasure yeah man. Yeah. yeah. So, um... I'm going to uh, head back in. I got to I gotta get my bike. I came up here for some service. Oh, speaking of, Matt in the service department. Uh -huh. See, look, I'm facing the sun. I got to be I gotta be this way. <laughs> Matt in the service department hooked me up today. I came down for some service. He explained to me what was going on. Excellent dude. Did excellent work. The bike feels great. So I'm excited to get back on it. Hey, so ride every day. And most importantly, make sure you're enjoying it. Peace.